Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. I'm going to provide an update on the i18N Manager. So, it's only been like a day, two days actually, since I posted about it. Um, but, I was able to take the Manager and make it vanilla. So now it has no dependencies. So I wanted to show what that ends up looking like. So, uh, this is on Dev.2. This whole write up on man on what this project is, what we reviewed previously, why we decided to, I decided to manage I-18 in this way. So I-18N is internationalization, if you're unfamiliar. So it's the way that we can ship localization of the little tiny statements within our components in a way that still keeps them unbundled, something you can ingest. Now, what, the, what this new method implies is either you have one dependency, so you don't have the whole tool chain of a uh, lit element in order to adopt this element, or you can use a zero dependency methodology that I mentioned in here. So in this article, I mentioned zero dependency integration. So if you supply a, um, an event that points to where your element is in effect, um, and the manager exists, it'll pick this up. If that manager doesn't exist, this event just kind of bubbles off into the ether and it's gone. Uh, so this is a way that if you supply your own localization engine or you want to ship your elements out to people and not have them depend upon the way we do localization, you could leverage our elements and not actually have to be using our in, intention of the way we handle internationalization. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to fire up uh, tooling. So I'm going to I-18, start on that. And we can see from our manager here. Now, this is a harder uh, little demonstration for me to do without actually just recording it. So what's going on here is I can change the language, and we see that it updates. So this is a little drop down. It's setting language globally in the manager. And then things that support that language just switch over to it. Now, I think this is really an impressive demo here. So if I leave that hovered, now the focal state is still up above. So if I just push the up arrow, it'll toggle between them. And you see how fast this is. I mean, it's instantaneous, um, this methodology that we're using. Now, each of these elements is pr providing its own localization is the key point here. You can have your full application localized using this, but every other approach is only doing full application. We can actually ship you the localizations, which I think is critical if we actually want web components to explode and be used in a um, you know repurposable manner by anyone. If I have this self-check and the self-check tag says, click to reveal, and you don't, you're not making this web component for English environments, it's already less useful to you. So let's see what the change was to get this off of lit element. Now, um, as I, I know, love going, oh, that dependencies block, nothing. Oh, no, whatever will we do? So um, the mix-in also doesn't require uh, lit element. So if you want to use the mix-in, the mix-in is kind of a, uh, a cheat, if you will, on uh, it just simplifies the integration even further. So let's look at some of the ways that I'm using the mix-in. Um, as well, but the mixin is simplified now too. So the mixin calls the store. You technically can pull the store from you know referencing the mixin. There's, it's easier right in one line. But so in our lifecycle, we tee up a this dot t value that's just an empty object. Now, if the what this gets mixed into is lit element, this is going to help out. It's not required. You don't have to use lit element, and there's no dependency of lit element. So if what I apply this mix into is lit element and has static properties, it's just gonna mix in uh, a T. Um, why this is useful in lit element is it makes it reactive. So in a lit element based project, in my render function now, if I just call this dot T dot whatever, it should update. Now, the big deal is register localization. We can see there's nothing else to it. The mix in has been simplified as well as part of this process. So. If you use the mixin to do register localization, we'll find something that does. Um, for example, our clean one theme. So I'm actually starting to use this to translate um, and provide localiz uh, localization support uh, in our theme layer in Hack CMS. So I'll show a demo of that too. But this is all that's required, right? So you provide the translation, right? So I've got site search content. So in my template, 
I have the area text set to site search content as a variable. Now that variable defaults to search site content. So my English speaking users get the exact same experience. It's lightning fast because it's lit element that's going to have to update the other variables anyway. But we register localization. So it beams up a reference to us and import.meta.url so that we know where this file lives and the locals localizations that it supports. So we can see that just from this little bit of integration and up above, we've got the mix in, right? So we pull the mix in, in. it's mixed in with this is a very complicated element <laughs> uh, along the way. So now we can add support for these other languages. So let's see this in action. Uh, I'm going to go over to hacks CMS sites and um, this is clean one. So clean one, I believe, is used in uh, it's either in the hacks the web. Whoops, I think it's the hacks the web website. Let's see, hacks the web. Let's start. So at our CMS layer, no, this doesn't have a little search thing, so that's not actually. Maybe it's a. Uh, Let's, let's find one. I know there's. I know it's in there. That's the learn to theme. Um, it might be. Oops. Um, might be four hundred two. Let's see. I know one of these has it. Okay. So very subtle difference between the two. But the reason I knew is because there wasn't a search thing up here. So the search field, right? I can search for page one. It comes up. It says it found results. Yay. Now, I can. Go in here and we will um, just abuse the singleton. So I can say, you know, there we go. I can say um, window.i18manager store.instance, or I could actually do request availability. Um, and that's going to append an instance if it doesn't already exist, but it already exists. So that's going to return to me, hey, this is in the page. It's got. English as a language, and we also added in some just minor detection for uh, language direction support. So this isn't going to actually set dir, but you could you could use the singleton to verify what the document's uh, direction is. That way, if let's say we switched from English to Hebrew, and Hebrew is a right to left language, English is left is left to right, right to left. Um, I could forcibly update it if I wanted to, or add in support, maybe check boxes and say, I prefer this to be right to left. So let's change language. So I can change the language just by updating Lang. So if I set Lang to ES, that is going to go through and anything, any element anywhere, and these elements are independent ones as well in Hack CMS. So these elements just have these translations uh, built in. But we can see that like the Octocat doesn't, and yet it still displays English. I can go and open up Hacks, and we can see that Hacks is also now picked up that state change and translated, right? Now, visually through the UI, I can go back to English. So I can go back to English through here. That sets it on the whole document, and we get back to that search type. Now, I did have a an error there associated with an icon or something, but that's not a big deal. So let's switch it to German. DE, we can see that the search text has changed. And let's switch the UI over to French. And now it switches over to French. So elements that support French are going to show that. Now I have to I have to mess with that one apparently because I think I have localization for French in that element, but I haven't actually supplied an object for it. Um, so that is the gist of the integration. Now if we're looking at it from the perspective of the manager, the, the manager is now extending HTML elements. So we've got a singleton uh, just as before. It's going to append to the document. It's going to export a reference so that we have one thing at the top document. The reason I was able to remove lit element, though, is this isn't doing anything really that's requiring lit element. So uh, I personally like using lit element uh, when we're talking lots of properties and attributes that need to be kept in sync. When we're talking managing the render function, so you've got something visual, and when the user tweaks the data, it's very reactive and it, up, it needs to update very fast. Yes, you can do that with vanilla. It's just a lot cleaner when you write it with lit element or lit HTML for that matter. So um, the only aspects of lit 
uh, lit element that were being used in our manager was the updated callback. So in lit element, it has an updated lifecycle that runs whenever a, an attribute change or an attribute changes, it updates the property or vice versa. So it keeps those two in sync. And that generates a change notice. So the updated lifecycle fires. However, you can do this with vanilla. So there's been some minor cleanup in here as a result of that to get rid of that dependency. But where is it? It's the bottom. Yeah. So this got rid of the updated lifecycle uh, from before. I have to then manually say there are these observed attributes. So I am observing changes on language and uh, direction. Then there's an attribute change callback. So this is going to fire anytime there's a change noticed on either of these, which is basically what the updated lifecycle is doing. So then I, and actually, you know what? I should probably make this ship new value just to be safe. Um, in these instances, yeah. So what this is doing is in saying, okay, if there's a language, if or if the attribute that changes the language or direction, then we're going to dispatch an event. Um, another way I could write this includes ATTR. All right, get rid of those. And this is then just going to be Lang and Dir. Now, obviously, these are the only two attributes I'm monitoring, so this is probably irrelevant. But if I wanted to add other properties and map them to attributes in the future, it just sets me up for that. So I always like to emit a thing changed type of event that has the value of what it is. This isn't used in my element. This would be if you were monitoring uh, the statefulness of the manager directly as opposed to referencing the manager. So just for consistency. Also, I'm not currently doing anything with direction uh, beyond just managing uh, its default value. So then if it's language, and we actually have a language, right? So it's not empty, like that your change isn't that it's just an empty value. Uh, then we're going to run our updated language logic. Um, then we have to supply getters and setters directly. And this is going to help bridge, you know, when someone does, you know, someone me, does this dot dir, it's going to return to me whatever the attribute is. So this helps bind the attributes and the properties together. So whenever a property is set like this dot dir equals, then it's going to make sure that it's setting the attribute. So there's minimal um, boilerplate code, you know, to get off of lit element in this case. Um, also, as part of this cleanup, I also, um, I remember this was in the last video, there's this fallback. So previously, that had to happen in the connected callback. You had to actually, I think if I go back enough in my history, there it is. You'd have to supply something like this, where you say uh, this dot underscore T equals and a spread of the original T value. That way it's right as the element gets appended. Hey, let's keep a copy of what the original uh, values we had were. Now that happens automatically. So if I go back to the manager, when we normal, so there's this thing called detail normalization. So we have either you can broadcast that event and the event has certain details, or you can just manually call register localization um, and register directly. That whenever that happens, either the event or direct registration, we do some work to allow you to not have to put in all the different variables, but yet we can resolve them if they're not there. You can supply them, but so uh, for example, if we're if you didn't supply a namespace, which is required, but you are not required to use it, we forcibly set the namespace to be the name of the element. It seems like a logical default. Um, also when it comes to updated callback. So this is another way that we're able to opt into lit element um, or just general convention of how someone writes vanilla JavaScript. Generally, people have a render function. You don't have to, but they generally do. So if when you implement our manager, you haven't supplied an updated callback, but you have supplied an element and it has a request update, that would imply it's lit element. If it has render, then that would imply it's vanilla. So what's going to happen is that's going to run after the T value is updated. Then uh, did some cleanup on local paths to point to that. Um, but here, here we go. So if we have a context and a namespace, then we can run these additional uh, things. So if we have a context and a namespace, then if we have a T value, so that's your default strings, 
then we just do this. So this no longer has to happen in connected. This event happens much earlier in the life cycle to guarantee it's going to match. So that's nice. So that is the bulk of it. This code is up um, and available uh, now on, uh, you can read about it there. We have it up in our LRN web components repository for the time being. It's going to be released with the next uh, major publish of all of our projects. So it's under here under I-18 and manager. Um, if you want to look through those for the time being, it's going to be in the next release. We're still waiting on um, making some additional fixes and doing some merges into hacks directly. Once we have that in place, then this will be released as well since we like to make sure we update the whole portfolio as we go along. But if you want to learn more about our projects, what we're doing, what our mission is, you can go to hackstheweb.org. This is going to keep getting enhanced as we keep shipping better and better versions of these assets and look for it to be uh, translatable and localizable in the near future. So with that, happy hacksing.